and NICC per se. But for those who want to hear a resurrected message, let me take you to a scripture that moves us from the cross. Somebody say, Jesus is no longer on the cross. Because no sometimes we talk as though he's still there. Ephesians chapter 4, please. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, verse 9. Uh, the Bible is talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus. And it says in verse 7. But to each one grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he let captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the one, is the very one who ascended higher than all the universe. Or higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was him who gave some to be apostles. Some to be prophets. Some to be evangelists. And some to be pastors and teachers. To prepare God's people for works of service. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith. And in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So the reasons why Jesus died and ascended was so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and become mature. So when we come into the place of maturity... You're actually fulfilling Easter Sunday. If all you do is to laugh and celebrate and say, Oh God, Easter Sunday, Jesus resurrected. You've not done anything. You've not played your part. Your part is to go from what Jesus did on the cross and to fulfill what you need to do in this particular finished work of Christ. So that's why we're going to continue to look at faith 2.0. Somebody say faith 2.0. Say after me, faith 2.0. As I was doing the worship, uh, something came to me as I was thinking about this message. One of the reasons why we say faith doesn't work is that when we hear a message of faith, we take an action that is not congruent with where we are. I was telling Joe all this. He told me to come and do some exercise with him on Friday or Thursday or something. I said, okay, I'll do the exercise with you. It was sit-ups and, you know, the kind of thing that I don't really like doing. So he kept pushing me and pushing me to do more and more. So I said to him, wait a minute. If you push me too much, I would do it today. But tomorrow, I will tell you, no. Not that what he's asking me to do doesn't work. But you want to take me from couch to 5K in one day. It doesn't work that way. I said, if you let me do just a little bit, so that I myself feel like I've overachieved, then when you call me tomorrow, I'm like, yeah. Then you make me do a little bit more then I feel good that I'm achieving, then I do a little bit more. Faith is a seed. It's kind of strange, but the way the Holy Spirit explained it to me is, is like this. Faith that God gave you, the substance itself, is finished, if you like. As far as God is concerned, it's finished. But because you are a co-laborer with God, he has orchestrated it in such a way that you have to play your own part of it for you to experience it. 
Let me say that again. When the Bible tells us in the book of Romans that everyone has been given the measure of faith, it means that inside you right now when you got saved is the ability to move mountains by that faith. The faith in you that exists right now can do everything that Jesus did when he walked the earth. However, God has made it so that you have to develop it to get to that point where you can do everything that Jesus did on earth. The problem is that when we hear a message of faith, we want to go from not familiar with using our faith at all to doing something very big. And when it doesn't work that way, because there is no process of development, <coughs> let me explain it like this. You're watching TV. A man of God says, you know what? By faith, this is how he bought his house. He did something and then God just gave him a house, a 10-bedroom house. And, and you say, yes. Amen. Me too. I believe God. I, and so nothing happens. You say, well, faith doesn't work. No, you didn't listen for what he had to do first. To get to that point where that faith began to work for him. So, as we listen to the message today, the good news is you can start from where you are. Start believing God for a pen. Start believing God for a parking space. Start believing God for a tire. Then you can believe God for a car. Amen? Start believing God for an oyster. Then you begin to believe God for a car. Start believing God for a flat. Then you can believe God for a house. It's not going to be automatic unless the only proviso is this. The gift of faith that is going to work for that situation right now. Because God wants to do something. But for most of us, we have to grow in faith. So I need to say that first. All right, praise God. Next. Last week, or from the beginning, I'm still at the introduction. It's like the Lord gave me some other things in the introduction, so I want to say to you. We have agreed that we are what? Citizens of where? And thank you. And we're living on the earth. Thank you. You see, <laughs> let me say something about children. I asked a question one day in the prayer meeting. I said, does anybody want to start praying for the church? No adult raised their hands. Two children raised their hands. And my flesh wanted to say, no, don't worry, praise God. <laughs> but the scripture jumped in my spirit that from the mouths of babes and sucklings, God has ordained praise. So I call these two children together. I say, okay, praise God. Pray for this person and that person. Let's agree. Praise God. So I keep checking in with them. And you know, funny enough, amazingly enough, they have told me stuff that is 100% accurate. Don't know how I got to that one. But, so when they remember things, it's really good that we know that that's the way that God wants it to be. Praise God. So, we are citizens of heaven and we are living on the earth. 
Now, let me add some things to that so that you understand it a little bit better. When a president of a country is going to visit another country, do you know what they do? They would go with everything they need from the country of origin to the country where they are visiting. Am I correct? So I asked one of my neighbors who, is a, who used to be a soldier. He said, oh yeah, they'll go with their security. They'll go with their cars. They'll go with everything they need for that journey. Those things belonged to the country of origin, to the country where they're visiting. You know what he said to me? He said, you know what, Bumi? Really? They don't trust. They don't trust the country they're visiting. They're not going to leave their <laughs> president or ambassador in the hands of people they don't trust. No, they're not going to do that. I said, huh? Do you think God trusts the economy of the world? Do you think God trusts the security of the world? Is that not why he gave us angels to watch over us? Is that not why he put in some principles that will always work on the earth when it comes to our economic situation. So in the same way, when you got born again and God was going to now leave you on the earth, he also gave you, guess what he gave you? Part of his nature. All right. Let me say it again so that we understand it. When you were left on earth after you got saved, God gave you part of his nature because you are now coming from your country of origin to a visit on the earth. So he gave you part of his nature. What's that? One of them, his word. Say after me, God's word God's is God's nature. God gave you his word. He knows that his word always works wherever he says it. So he gave you his word. Go to Isaiah 55. Let's have a look. Come and look at what God gave you. And then we're going to look at John 12. Isaiah 55 first. Am I correct? Yeah, it is. It says in verse 10, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower, and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty. That's the kind of word that God gave you and me to use on the earth. But will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God gave you his word. Jesus knew that. And so go with me to John 12. Let me show you this. John 12. John 12. <coughs> verse 49. John 12. Is it 49? It's 49. Okay. John 12. Are we there? Okay, let me read verse 49. Verse 49. For, Jesus speaking, I did not speak on my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say 
and how to say it. Which means, in other words, when Jesus walked on the earth, he also spoke the words that God gave him to speak. He did not speak his own words. Because he was coming from his residence in heaven to visit on the earth. That's why we are supposed to speak God's words. Particularly when things are not going as it should. But what do we do most of the time? Michael. What do we do most of the time? We speak what we see. We speak what's going on. We speak what we're experiencing. We are supposed to speak what God says. So he gave us his word. The second thing he did, another thing he did, not the second thing. Another thing he did was to give us his faith. This faith we're talking about is God's faith. It's not my faith, not your faith. It's God's faith because you are a citizen of heaven. Residing on the earth. You're visiting. So God has to give you his faith to operate in the new place where you're going to be residing. Say after me, God gave me faith. his faith. His Say God gave me, God gave me. His, faith. his faith. Guess what his faith is like? His faith is described for us in Hebrews 11. Go to Hebrews 11. I'll show you what his faith is like. Oh, if, if I can just understand this. Hebrews 11. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. This is what the Asians were commended for and it tells us that we know that by faith the universe was was what was formed as God's command so that what it's seen was not made out of what is visible that's the kind of faith God has God commands by faith and it happens that's the kind of faith he gave you and me it's the same faith. It's the same faith. It's not going to give you some fake faith. So Peter understood that. Go to Second Peter chapter 1. I'm going to show you this. Peter understands. He wrote a letter to us that we must also understand. He says, Simon Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have done what? Have received what? Uh -uh. Have, have received? Read it. Finish it. Is that all it says in your Bible? To those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Meaning the same faith Jesus had is the same faith they had is the same faith we have. Why? Because all of us were or are citizens of heaven visiting on the earth. 
So he has to give us the same faith. He has to. I think one of the problems we're going to come to, which we need to resolve in our minds, you know when I said if a president were to be traveling from a country to another, some of you said, yeah, they'll do that for a president. I'm not a president. You know what we need to understand is that God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. When I read that in the Bible, I put the Bible down quickly because I thought this is too much. God loves you the same way he loves Jesus. Therefore, whatever he did for Christ, he'll do for you. So, if we understand that, then we can understand this, that we have received a faith as precious as the apostles did. So, so the question is, why, why did it work for the apostles and it's not quite working for us? Well, we'll look at that also. And Peter carried on, he says, grace and peace be yours through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and of Jesus for the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. He says to us, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. He says to us, through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, we may partake of the divine nature. That's what I'm talking about here. Right. I, was, I started with that earlier on. In that God gave us part of his nature. So that through them we may partake of the divine nature. In the divine nature. And escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So the point I'm making to you is this. When God left you on the earth to visit, he gave you faith like his. So everything God has given us is part of his nature. Because he wants us to dominate the earth he wants us to rule on the earth. He wants us to do exactly what he would have done if he was here. That's why he gave us those things. All right. Let me go on and say one or two other things. You know something else that I want to say to you? Say after me. No, okay, let me say it first. You think about it, then you say it after me. Everything brings after its own kind. Everything brings after its own kind. The word of God will produce what the word of God said it will produce if you use it. Faith will bring about more faith. Because I said to you, faith is like seed. The word produces. The Bible says the sower sows what? The word. That word is seed. And some that fell on the good soil produced a hundred and thirty and sixty fold. Because the word always produces after its kind. So everything produces after its... Oh, thank you Holy Ghost. Everything produces after its kind. Even when you say things you are not supposed to say, it produces. It will produce after its kind. Oh, I'm depressed. Guess what happens? <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> as long as you mean it when you say it, uh, it's 
has to. It has to. It has to produce. It has to produce after its kind. You tell your children you are so silly and stupid. <gasps> Guess what happens? <gasps> that stupidity has to reproduce itself because you must have what you say. The way, that the, the way that the Lord has structured the earth is that the earth is like the ground. What you say is the seed. And because you say it, it produces after its own kind. And that's scary. It's also very exciting. It means if I want to change what I see, I simply change what I say. Because what I say has to produce. It has to produce. It has to produce. Especially what you say about yourself. It has to produce after its own kind. I'm so fat and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> You see all kinds of things about yourself that you don't like. Because it has to produce. And you have to be eating what you're not supposed to eat. Because you have said. Because you've said you're fat and ugly. So it has to produce It has to. So you keep going back to the mirror. Why am I so fat and ugly? It then reproduces. <laughs> In the exact same way, you keep saying, I look trim and healthy. I'm trim and healthy. You don't have to, you don't, now here's the point. You don't have to be it to start saying it. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. Abraham was not a father yet when he began to now agree with God that he is a father of many nations. The more he agreed with God and said what God said, And say what God has said because the word of God has to produce. Has to produce because we've seen it work negatively. So we know it works. Even though it's not the kind of working we want, but we know it works. We know it works. So it has to work positively too. All right. I said to you, you have to say after me, everything... Produces after its kind. So therefore, I speak what I want. You know the unbelievers, they call this thing, they call it the law of attraction. Oh, man. I said something one time I was preaching about the supremacy, the supremacy of God's word. And the Holy Spirit told me that Words are like vibrations. Remember that? Yeah. That when you speak, it goes to the future, and then you go catch up with the word that you spoke. Oh. You know, yesterday I did another PB. 
personal best. I'm now doing the 5K under 26 minutes. I've learned so much about myself in doing that 5K. My. And I'm learning about faith too. Do you know something? Because I said now, I do the 5K in 25 minutes, 25 seconds. I do the 5K, I look at myself and say, you do the 5K, boom, you do the 5K in 25 minutes, 25 seconds. First I was saying I do it in 26 minutes. I've gone past that now. I'm now changing the confession to something else. You know what's strange? The people, you know because I said that, the people to help me fulfill it, they came along. I got a guy I train with who is 68. Yeah, he runs faster than me, he's 68. His personal best is 20, no, his personal best now is 24 minutes. His personal best when he was 20 was 17 minutes. His personal best now is 24 minutes. You know what this guy does for me? He'll meet me one day of the week, and then on the 5K, he'll be urging me on. Come on, come on, come on. So I said to myself, if I said that I want to do the 5K in 40 minutes, somebody will be there too, making sure I fulfill it in 40 minutes. If you keep on agreeing with God in what God has said about you, so now or later, the people to help you to achieve what God has said about you will come along. They'll come along. Because after all, your friends who help you to be more depressed, they also came along. Because you said it so much, you attracted them. You drew them in. You just go back and listen to what you say. So now, everything produces after its own kind. Oh, man, not even in, I'm, I'm still in the intro. Praise God. So let me, let, me, let me press on a little bit here. So when it comes to faith, let me just recap a moment. When it comes to faith, we need to understand that faith is a nature of God. Faith is who God is. God uses faith. That's how he made the universe, by faith. We understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So faith commands, faith produces. Faith is a substance, it's, it's, it's powerful, it works. It worked for God, so he gave it to us. He says, go use faith on the earth. That's how I want you to function. I want you to function on the earth by faith. You, you can have a desire. You may be desperate, but that's not faith. Faith is, you know, the Bible says that uh, without faith it's impossible to please God because anybody that comes to him must believe that he exists. Believe is two things. Number one is to believe that he exists. Some of us believe that yes, God can do this. That's not faith. It says believe that he exists. And what? Is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You've got to go from God can do, God can heal. Yeah, yeah, I know God can heal. That's not faith. God can heal is not faith. You say, okay, so what is? God can heal and he has healed me and therefore I want the manifestation of that healing. That's faith. Because sometimes we can think God is a healer but he won't heal me. Faith 
faith is, he can do it, he has done it for me. So therefore, I must enter into what he has done for me. That's faith. You know what? We, we all have faith in certain aspects of our lives. We need to extend it to all aspects of our lives. How many of us are believers? I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Put your hand up. Okay, praise God. How many of us know that if we die today, we're going to heaven? Put your hand up. How many of us have seen heaven? Most of us haven't. So how do you know you're going there then? You just know. You just believe. Why? How did you get to believe that you're going to heaven? By the word. And by believing. What's your name? How do you know that? Sounds like a strange question, right? Mr. Cameraman, how do you know Jennifer is your wife? How do you know? <laughs> and you got a certificate. Thank you. And you got a ring. You gave her a ring. How do you know she's your wife? Because she said so. Oh. Because she said so. She said, I agree. Because she said so. And because she said so, you began to treat her so. And the more you treated her so, the more she responded so. And so you believed more as a result of what she had said she was to you. And the more this went on and on, the more you had intimate conversations with your wife. And intimate things that produces babies with your wife. And the more you did, the more you both agreed that I'm your wife, you are my husband. Amen. What's all this have to do with faith? Everything. Because somebody who was a stranger, you've now persuaded yourself that they are the most important intimate person on earth with you. But before, they were a stranger. But through a process of persuasion, you have come to the point where you say, you are my wife, I'm your husband. So that's how Abraham was fully persuaded. Let me tell you something. That persuasion starts by making a choice. You choose to believe the word of God. That's how it starts. You choose to believe it. If God says you are healed, you choose to believe it. If God says you are prosperous, you first of all have to choose to believe it. Without choosing to believe it, your will is not in place with God's will. And so it can't work. Faith can be produced when your will and God's will become the same. Until then, faith won't work. That persuasion must take place in your heart first. The husband says to the wife, do you agree 
The wife says, I do. The husband says, I do. That's why it begins. Without that, it's not going to start. God needs your will. God is not going to bypass your will and then do what he wants to do. No. Somebody says, if God is God, let him just do what he wants. He can, but that's not, that's not how he has chosen to do it. And no matter what you think or say, it's not going to happen the way you think it should happen. It's going to happen the way that God says it's going to happen. So you must subject your will first to God's will. Then it works. I'm going to stop there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're still at the introduction. Help us to understand your spiritual word through the things that we see on the earth. Help us to understand spiritual things through the natural things that we see. Help us to get to the point where we understand that we are citizens of heaven visiting the earth and we have come with the nature of our country of origin our place of origin our kingdom of origin to function on the earth thank you lord for your divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of you who has called us by your own glory and goodness. Through these, we have received such great and precious promises. So that through them, we may partake of your divine nature. We want to walk by the faith that is yours that you have given us. Help us, O oh God, to put faith to work for us. In every area of our lives. In Jesus name we pray.